My name is Mark Snyder, and I'm 27, and I grew up in Snyder County, Pennsylvania. I was the victim of severe anti-gay bullying. I definitely became suicidal around ninth grade. I found out about the most recent suicide due to anti-gay bullying, uh, Brandon Bittner, on, um, gosh, it was CNN or something, and it was so, so surreal, just really weird to see Snyder County boy, you know, commit suicide due to anti-gay bullying, and to see his picture and read about him, it just felt, it almost felt like I was reading about myself. And I remember the first day of seventh grade, um, an older student called me faggot, and from there it just progressed. The harassment would really begin on the bus. They would throw spitballs at me and yell sissy. Um, City boy was a name they had for me. Um, and then I would get to school and my heart would be racing, you know, and I would try to get to my locker and there were bullies blocking the hallway. There were several times when I got to my locker and it said fag across it with black marker, um, queer. I got death threats on my locker. My gym clothes were urinated on. There was a kid who would kick the back of my heels every day. Every, between every class, this kid would show up and kick the back of my heels as I walked through the school. Um, other kids in the school knew what was going on. Everybody did. You know, I would sit alone at lunchtime. The night before school, every night, I would have trouble falling asleep, and I would be nervous about, like, what was going to happen the next day. Like, kids you know, kicking me or whatever, and what I was going to do to handle it. One of the guidance counselors said that I should stop walking around the hallway like a sad puppy dog. Um, that was her, that was her advice, that I should man, you know, kind of man up. That year is the year where one day after school I came home. My dad had forgotten to pick me up at the school bus that day, so I walked up the mountain to my house, and um, no one was home, and I went into my mom and dad's bedroom, and I got my dad's pistol out from the top shelf of his closet out of a little box. It was a black pistol, and I loaded it, and I put it against the side of my head, and I sat there for like an hour, um, and I just couldn't pull the trigger. And, you know, I felt like a chicken, and I regretted not being able to do it. You know, the boy who committed suicide recently from my hometown the principal said that they have a zero tolerance policy for bullying. There were, there were anti-bullying assemblies in my school, and those assemblies were very watered down and very generalized to the point where the words gay and lesbian and faggot or sissy, the words weren't even used. And oftentimes they would, they would include skits that frankly were cheesy, and the, and the students would make fun of it. And, and then the assembly would become like a joke of the school, making things worse. So the assemblies that I think really work are the kind that, um, that organizations like Speak Out and PFLAG and GLSEN do where young people or parents of LGBT people come in and share their personal stories. You know, I remember being in high schools in Massachusetts where um, the kids were totally rowdy, and no one was paying attention. And when I stood up there and said, um, my name's Mark, and I'm gay, and people call me a faggot and a sissy, you could hear a pin drop. And the kids, you could see, the, you could see and hear the change in those kids after I shared my story about what I was going through. And, and some of the most surprising students would come up to me afterwards and say, whoa, man, like, I'm not going to say faggot anymore. Um, you know, the biggest jocks of the class would come up and, and tell me how moving it was to hear somebody's personal stories. I also think that teachers need to do very simple things, you know. I never saw a sticker in my school about safe space or a rainbow sticker. The number one thing you can do is be present in the hallway. Usually there were um, student hall monitors or there was nobody in the hallway, and that's when a lot of the violence and harassment would happen. A lot of us who are victims of bullying have bullied other people. I've, I've bullied other people. It's, it's more complex than just good kids versus bad kids. And how to offer support to the bullies to change. And sometimes bullies can turn around and become the biggest ally. The kind of um, next wave of my story is that this year my dad came out as gay. And um, I, I had just kind of accepted my position at Collage, um, where the only national 
youth-driven network of people with lesbian, gay, bi, or trans, or queer parents. And now I'm supporting my father in his coming out process. The more people share our stories and the more we get movies like No Dumb Questions out there, that's the kind of stuff that creates a cultural shift and a change in the school climate.